Right, hello, students, and uh, welcome back to Chemical Equilibrium Discussions. And uh, this time we're going to talk about reaction quotient expressions. And um, this time I decided to use a little headset, and just so you know, because I've done it for you, so I don't sound like I'm talking out in the middle of an empty ravine like the other ones, um, but this thing is awful. It was designed somewhere in the pit of hell, but anyways, nevertheless, for the sake of, of you and, uh, and because I love you so much, I am suffering. So we have uh, reaction quotient expressions, and typically labeled Q. Um, now the whole idea of a reaction quotient expression is that uh, you can take initial values that are not at equilibrium compare them to the equilibrium constant expression and it can determine what direction the reaction will go, if it'll go forward or backwards. So I've set up a little reaction right here with um, nitrogen or dinitrogen tetroxide with, that turns into nitrogen dioxide. So similar uh, reaction we've been using in, uh, in earlier discussions. But uh, so, so here's the question. Uh, what if I told you that my initial concentration of dinitrogen tetroxide gas was one molar and that my initial concentration of nitrogen dioxide was 0.5 molar? So the question is, with a Kc of 0.211 or an equilibrium constant of 0.211 and a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, <clears throat> what's this reaction going to do? Are we going to create uh, more product or is it going to move back towards the reactant side? Now, one of the things you can notice right off the bat is that you see that uh, with a very low Kc, the reaction already favors the reactant side. So, um, but still, we have you know double here as we have here. So, uh, it, it's hard to know. But you can use a Q or a reaction quotient expression to uh, quickly tell you the answer to a problem like that. So, uh, your typical um, Kc, of course, equals the uh, concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So, the the Q equals the same thing only with uh, with your initial concentrations. You don't have to have equilibrium concentrations for the Q. So, um, so let's just put those in there. So our products are NO2, and so we're going to have uh, 0.5 squared uh, divided by our reactants. <coughs> Let's see, let me, a little bit better handwriting on that. 0.5 squared uh, divided by our reactants here. And, and that is going to, uh, to give us a number. And let me see if we can uh, calculate that out real quick. Uh, 0.5 squared divided by 1. Oh, that's an easy one. I don't even have to use a calculator. 0.25. All right. So now, um, now we have to just do a little comparison. So we look at KC and we look at Q. So Q, you can notice, is a little bit larger than KC. Um, and so the reaction in this case is going to proceed from right to left. All right. Um, now, the reason for that <coughs> is that it needs to achieve equilibrium. So it's going to move back toward uh, the reactant side. Um, so in this case, if our, if our total amount of product exceeds our equilibrium, we're going to have to move back toward, uh, toward the, the backward direction. Now, if we were lower than equilibrium, this number is well, it would it would continue moving forward. So what we can assume is that this reaction is going to move back toward the reactants. Um, it'll proceed from right to left, um, but not very much. Um, it's uh, it's going to do this very quickly, and it's going to be a pretty low level. But um, so you can do that. You can take whatever initial concentrations they give you and compare it to the Kc, and if your uh, Kc is less than your Q, like we have here, well then it's going to move back toward the reactant side. And if your Kc is larger than the Q, which would be opposite of this, you're going to move toward the products side. Um, and if your Kc and your Q are equal, guess what? You're at equilibrium, and there you go. Nothing is going to happen. It's just going to continue in the same way possible. So hopefully this explains the idea of a reaction quotient expression and helps you guys out with that.